Good morning everybody, it's Thursday today and a very dull day today. I think um, from what I see on Facebook earlier on there have been some areas of East Kilbride have had snow this morning. Uh, not, I didn't see it here in, anyway uh, and it is raining but uh, I think it's quite cold outside, certainly very dull and certainly nothing like uh, as if it should be on the 6th of May. So I hope everybody is doing alright. And uh, I sent out the West Kirk Weekly last night. I gave some information there about the Christians Against Poverty. There are some churches in East Bride that run um, groups to help people and support people uh, in debt and uh, give them some uh, mentoring and befriending. And uh, I'm on grief, certainly uh, do that. And the girl there, Fiona Lament, is uh, very keen that we should know all about that too. Um, I know that uh, Claremont also uh, run, or did, used to, but I think they still do, uh, also run some uh, CAP groups. So if it's something that you would be interested in or something that you could pass on to somebody else, the information is there and you can find the information if you're looking for it on Moncrief Church's website. Uh, and apart from that, I think most things now are gearing up towards the General Assembly. So we will be uh, finding out some of the things that will be coming up there soon. So we have been uh, reading uh, from First Samuel. We'll continue to do that and we're actually on to verse chapter 26 today and starting at verse 1. And it's entitled, David Spears Saul's Life Again. So we spoiler there for you. Some men from Ziph came to Saul at Gibeah and told him that David was hiding on Mount Cachalaha at the edge of Judean wilderness. Saul went at once with 3,000 of the best soldiers in Israel to the wilderness to look for David and camped by the road. David was still in the wilderness and when he learned that Saul had come to look for him, he sent spies and found out that Saul was indeed there. He went at once and located the exact place where Saul and Abner slept. Saul slept inside the camp and his men camped around him. Then David asked his men, Which of you two will go to Saul's camp with me? I will, Abishai answered. So that night they entered Saul's camp and found Saul sleeping in the centre of the camp with his spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner and the troops were sleeping around him. Abishai said to David, God has put your enemy in your power tonight. Now let me plunge his own spear through him and pin him to the ground with just one blow. I won't have to strike twice. But David said, You must not harm him. The Lord will certainly punish whoever harms his chosen king. By the living Lord, David continued, I know that the Lord himself will kill Saul, either when his time comes to die a natural death or when he dies in battle. The Lord forbid that I should try to harm the one whom the Lord has made king. Let's take his spear and his water jar and go. So David took the spear and the water jar from right beside Saul's head, and he and Abishai left. No one saw it or knew what had happened or even woke up. They were all sound asleep because the Lord had sent a heavy sleep on them all. Then David crossed over to the other side of the valley and shouted to Saul's troops and to Abner, Abner, can you hear me? Who is that shouting and waking up the king? Abner asked. David answered, Abner, aren't you the greatest man in Israel? So why aren't you protecting your master, the king? Just now someone entered the camp to kill your master. You failed your duty, Abner. I swear by the living Lord that all of you deserve to die because you have not protected your master, whom the Lord made king. Look, where is the king's spear? Where is the water jar that was right by his head? Saul recognised David's voice, voice and asked, David, is that you, my son? Yes, your majesty, David answered, and he added, Why, sir, are you still pursuing me, your servant? What have I done? What crime have I committed? Your majesty, listen to what I have to say. If it is the Lord who has turned you against me, an offering to him will make him change his mind. But if some people have done it, may the Lord's curse fall on them. For they have driven me out from the Lord's land to a country where I can only worship foreign gods. Don't let me be killed on foreign soil away from the Lord. Why should the king of Israel come to kill a flea like me? 
Why should he hunt me down like a wild bird? Saul answered, I have done wrong. Come back, David, my son. I will never harm you again because you have spared my life tonight. I have been a fool. I have done a terrible thing. David replied, Here is your spear, your majesty. Let one of your men come over and get it. The Lord rewards those who are faithful and righteous. Today he put you in my power, but I did not harm you, whom the Lord made king. Just as I have spared your life today, may the Lord do the same to me and free me from all troubles. Saul said to David, God bless you, my son. You will succeed in everything you do. So David went on his way and Saul returned home. I mean, and God bless this reading from First Samuel chapter 26. So, uh, take care everybody. Uh, we will see you tomorrow and hopefully I think the weather is supposed to be a bit better tomorrow. It certainly can't be any worse. Um, but look after yourselves. If you need anything, you know where we are and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.